Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I have another walkthrough to do. Uh, <laughs> I did one, I gotta do more. I've got so many decks that I have to do walkthroughs of. Well, I don't have to, but I want to. I'm like, it's been so long. I It'll give me something to do, but that's neither here nor there. Let's continue with another deck that I got from Kickstarter uh, just recently. I think this past week? Yeah, this past week, um, the Fyodor Pavlov Tarot, and I believe I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> Fyodor, Fyodor, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to call it, you know, the Pavlov Tarot for short. Um, you know, just easier flow of the words, you know, just makes it, you know, easier to know. But anyways, I saw it and I was like, okay, pretty deck, I'll get it. You know, if I like it, I like it, and if not, I'll just move it along, you know? And let me tell you right now, I was blown away with this deck when I finally got it in my hands. Like, it's it's my go-to now. Well, one of the go-tos. It's going to be a workhorse deck, for sure, and it's one that I definitely plan on getting a backup copy of because of the representation, the depictions of the cards that isn't don't necessarily gr break any new grounds in terms of tarot but does modernize the Rider Waite Smith in a very clever and, and unique way that rarely is seen uh in other decks you know other decks have attempted to do what Pavlov did in this deck uh but fail to, but you know, fail in the execution in one way or another. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that this book is uh, is perfect. This book, this deck is perfect. Um, but for the most part, the cards themselves, I can just pull them out and I can read with them. What is there is a few flaws in the booklet. You know, it, it's it seems that you know that's that's the theme here. <laughs> uh, the background, the backs are very beautiful as you can see they're gold with blue though i kind of wish the red maybe would have matched better i don't know uh, there is something about the box design that i don't know some, i find i find it lacking for some reason you know uh there's the back of the car of the book of the box i always try to make sure if there's anything that you know people need to be aware of in terms of like finding it because you know if you're if you're shopping around and you want a good genuine deck, and you never know copyright out there, you want to you want to see like okay, this is the specifics of what this deck looks like. This is how it comes. This is what it looks like. But for the most part, people, if you want an indie deck, buy it directly from the creator. Don't go anywhere else. Don't try Amazon. Don't try eBay. Just go directly to the website. But anyways, this deck isn't available for sale yet. He is still shipping out the Kickstarter rewards. Uh, so yeah, uh, hopefully in May you can go to his shop and you can buy, uh, his, uh, you can buy the deck there as well. Um, eventually, hopefully. Uh, so yeah, there are like two things of note, uh, the booklet, this is a good booklet for the most part. What is there is a mate, like it's, it, I, perfect. This is what I expect from a booklet, you see, and it's, it's not that much, you know, but you get the right amount as to why he depicted the cards as he did, uh, a good explanation of the meanings of the cards. He modernizes it and he 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 talks about like the gender changes here. It's 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 amazing. I love it. I, this is this is a this is the deck. If you want to make a tarot deck, this take take notes. Pay attention to this. Look at this. Take notes message Pavlov and talk to him, <laughs> you know, <laughs> take notes because, you know, he really showed you, he really showed what to do, uh, and how to do it right when making a deck, um, and a booklet for sure. But I will say, um, his name is Arthur, not Andrew. I'm not sure if he's like messing with us, <laughs> if he did it wrong on purpose, but it's Arthur Edward Waite not Andrew, uh, and also the writer. He also mentions writer. He's like, who's writer? I'm like, writer's the publisher. <laughs> like that. <laughs> like in Drag Race. Who the hell's Heather? I'm like, from the movie. <laughs> He's the publisher. <laughs> Who the hell's writer? Um, there is one more thing. I'm not sure if Pavlov caught this, but uh, right here, 
I thought, oh, maybe he mistitled it and it meant to say six of swords. No, it's the nine of swords. The six, seven, and eight of swords is missing. <laughs> is, is that grammatically correct? The six through the eight of swords are missing in the booklet. Um, so I'm like, no, but it'll be a nice little collector's thing. Also, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be happening with the, with the deck, with the booklet. Uh, if that where is supposed to be there. Um, because I just read through this uh, today, right before I went live. Because I'm like, I really wanted to get a good understanding. And really read through the booklet uh, to get a good understanding. Because the booklet is worth the time. Very few booklets are worth the time. Tear of Delphi and Majestic Earth, worth your time. Fyodor Pavlov Tarot booklet, worth your time. Highly recommend it. Um, so let's get into these cards. As I said gold backs beautiful beautiful printed i think you saw it right there at the bottom of the box uh printed in taiwan by expert playing card company uh very very good uh card printer uh company uh they are known for making the usi decks the pagan other worlds and uh, the materia prima uh the carnival at the end of the world tarot uh, what else? I think the Playful Heart Tarot as well. So if you have any of those cards and you like the card stock on here, it's in this deck as well. Linen finish, beautiful. Uh, so yeah, let's 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 begin the flip through. I love this magician. <laughs> I love the outfit that he's in. I love like it's again. You're gonna hear a lot of it. It's like beautiful, lots of beauty, lots of luxury. It reminds me of ethereal visions a lot of the times um but better <laughs> this is i said i said this is what ethereal visions wanted to be and that's that on that you know you know i love how he explains a lot of like the more difficult cards and how you know he worked through them you know like here is a good example of a good lover's card modernized you know he shows two trans people here but it's like you have to also remember that you know the cards are reflections of uh the inner self and so these two figures are aspects of yourself as well and so he really does go into um the uh the oh my gosh what was i gonna say the 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 intermixing of gender and how and this is a concept that's in occultism all around you know where you where you're going to find like, okay, there's feminine and masculine uh, concepts in a certain symbol or design or whatever that that's going to be intermixed with, uh, with, you know, to, to, to convey a concept uh, or, or a meaning in its symbol. Uh, I do like how the flaming heart is here. You know, the symbol, like I was just, I just learned that, you know, in alchemy, it's a symbol of conjunction, uh, which the lovers, I think, mixes pretty well into there chariot i love strength how he talks about that it's a werewolf instead and how the concept of that inner animal beast being tamed by uh by the gentler uh calmer side of humanity i guess uh it's 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 i love it i love that he was that he made this change here because you know i love a good werewolf <laughs> here we have the hermit and you can see that again, although he he does switch the genders, it, he's he he does a good job of explaining why. And it really doesn't it, like in reading the cards, it really doesn't bother me. Um, so yeah, I love this depiction of the Wheel of Fortune. Uh, this is a really good choice. I love Wheel of Fortunes. You know, to have the person there, the, the Fortuna, or I think. Uh, Robert Place calls it Ananki, I believe that's how you pronounce it, the, you know, uh, and how, you know, I love how she is blindfolded. I wonder if Justice is, no, you see, I, lo I love it, I love fortune, for fortune to be blindfolded rather than Justice, uh, because Fortune, it's like, you know, we, we have, we have, uh, we can turn the wheel, but we just don't know the consequences of our actions. We can't really see that far into them, you know, sometimes, you know, unintended consequences can happen with fortune uh here we have justice love it love it he, he talks about how there's like 
uh, references to different cards, I believe, in here. Like, I think, like, the Emperor and Strength. I believe there's motifs here that are blended into here artistically. Uh, we have the Hanged Man. Or I should say the Hanged Person. Uh, here we have Death. Love it with the items here, all down here. The scepters and the knives, the crowns and knowledge and material things. Uh, temperance. What I love is that he talks about, uh, again, I, I think I mentioned this before, the gender switching and interplay, but he's very noteful or very aware of, uh, you know, the traditionally feminine features you know you have the iris you have the flowing water we have like the the wings the soft you know clothing as well but it's a man in this in this situation so it's a man in these in this uh feminine environment blending the opposites together uh in temperance the devil love it very spicy a lot of his artwork outside of like from this deck is very similar to to this lots of bondage very very spicy spicy artwork i'm gonna say check him out i'm gonna link his instagram in the in the description down below um here we have the tower he points out like all the different elements i love how he added water wearing down the crumbling tower we have the earth of the um the tower we have the fire and we have the air i like how he also says that he puts the blue in the background to hint towards that there is going to be a calm after the storm or even the calm before the storm you know there's always a calmness surrounding these uh cataclysmic events he talks about how it's how the figure falling is not only Icar icarus but also uh the devil as well and he really does a good job of, exp of talking about the devil uh in, in throughout uh in the booklet as well but again if, if you don't if you haven't noticed <laughs> if i haven't um you know uh, emphasized this enough Please read the guidebook uh, in the that comes with the deck, even though it is missing three cards. <laughs> uh, and it isn't 100% accurate in terms of the history, but that's not the point. What it is is mostly about this deck and what he chooses to depict in this card, you know. Uh, like he points out the interlaced fingers and he, you know, there's, so he may have removed a few things, but he's able to transition the meanings into different forms, you know, uh, and designs in the cards. Here we have the moon again the wolf the werewolf of the animal side of in strength is brought here uh, he references a lot uh, also like other pieces of art that influenced him and inspired him in his depictions here we have the sun uh, again no creepy child uh, the tarot creators are all right you know they know now no more creepy children <laughs> you know and i like how he also broke down the wall and wore it away this wall is a motif that actually plays out throughout the rest of the cards as well and how it's like this card of freedom and liberation and openness and comfort within oneself uh i i, I love that i love that here we have judgment i think this the, the um it reminds me of uh, i think it's the art nouveau tarot where judgment is like this kind of like this features are still the same i guess but yeah this is uh but he talks about how this is more like the inner judgment and how it can be even more difficult ourselves uh he removed the angelic figure and instead put in place a, an ambiguous figure reminiscent of karen i believe is how you pronounce it uh, but also it's like supposed to be vague it's supposed to be like a higher force in general that is within ourselves that we uh that that you know critiques us and judges us i guess for for our past actions i believe if i'm if i'm misremembering the guidebook <laughs> here we have the world look at her she's luscious i love her she's comfortable she's there she's doing it she's living her life what's that what's what's not to like you know here we have the ace of wands now moving into the minor arcana here is a card this is what i want to see look at this different depictions of the three and the two of wands hello hello this is what i'm talking about planning execution they look different i mean how how hard was that how hard was that pixie from the grave that's right i'm calling you out i'm just kidding it, it, again it's like it, it, come on planning to i'm not hello <laughs> Like, I'm like, how hard is it to, to show that? It's a, it's a, it's a thing. It's a thing for the, for the 
two and three of wands for me. Anyways, uh, here we have the four of wands, celebration, all that. She said he talks about how the castle is not only like a source of like an escape uh, from the traditional um, um, blockment, I would say, and lock being a little. I can't even talk right now. But, it's, uh, you know, the two women are escaping from the restricted social structures here to kind of be themselves for a moment. Another thing is like, okay, you're out and away from the security of these of this of these walls, but you're close enough that you can, you know, get back in there if you need to escape from the dangers of the outside world, I guess. Here we have the five of wands. This one's that he talks about how it's much more of a playful take on it uh, and how this one is much more of a, you know, it's, it's charming though. Of course, some people can get bruised and hurt during these, you know, play fighting moments. But, you know, yeah, I also like how, how he incorporated women in here. Hello, you know? It's like it, it, a lot of it kind of a lot of the, the representation and depictions here is kind of like, why haven't we, you know, <laughs> um, you know, but I mean, unless I'm like forgetting a bunch of like hundreds of other decks that already like are like implementing a good balance of feminine and masculine uh, representation and cultural and diverse representations of different people, you know, like here we have a woman of color with braids, you know, in a, in a card of victory, huh? Here we have the seven of wands, and this one he's saying that this one's definitely much more like the direct conflict rather than the five of wands is more playful. This one is definitely more like okay, there's some there's some fighting, there's some uh, there's some you know the, the people will get hurt, you know. It's what's interesting is that he said is that he likes the eight of wands, but from what I've read in the guidebook, uh, he 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 really loves the eight of wands. I'm like really, and I find the eight of wands very plain. <laughs> You know, uh, but you know what? He, he loves he loves the native wands and he talks about how they're launching rather than like in the right away smith or another traditional decks. They're like they're they're falling down. I think there's I think there might be other decks that show them rising. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. But the but the cloth, the banner here uh, definitely indicates them flying upwards. So yeah. Moving on. Here we have the uh, nine of wands. I love this. I love how he's not afraid to to you know show different abled bodies uh, in this in this deck. You know, uh, there's a few other ones you know in, in throughout the cards, but this is the first one. I like how he also shows that there's the defensiveness with the uh, with the vertical wands, but also the offensiveness of the angled wands. Uh, so how you can read that to the cards like next to here and the cards behind it maybe as you know towards the shield what's the shield facing and all that you know what you're defending what you're attacking you know I love that and I love that you know bruised but still standing type of you know hurt but still standing type of uh, card uh, type of meaning that comes with the nine of wands here we have the ten of wands typical you know carrying the burden you know, uh, uh, the burdens that you carry, the responsibilities that you weigh. Sometimes you're weighing over yourself too much. Love it. And I love how there's... Uh, I love the court cards as well. Very simple. Not not as nice as some of the other court cards that I like to see. Uh, but still, I like how he talks about how, how they're doing stuff and how, they're, how they really show the different types of people. You know, here we have a, a bard, I believe is what he calls this card here. Uh, a musician. Here we have the knights, and I noticed the knights, the masculine suits, the knight of wands and the knight of swords have women, and the knight of coins and cups have men. And there again is that, you know, inserting, you know, masculine people and feminine people into their opposite of elements. Uh, you know, it's, it's, and showing how they act differently. So you're going to see how in the knight of cups and the knight of coins, they're off their horses. Uh, meanwhile, the Knights of Wands and Swords, they're on their horses and they're taking action. Um, so, yeah. Here we have the Queen of Wands. Love her. Of course, I'm like not a huge fan of the cat, but I'm not a huge fan of cats in general. But, whatever. Love this King of Wands. <laughs> Love him. I, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, other than, like, you know fire it's i think the king of wands is a card that i feel like i should have a more stronger connection to but i just you know i just don't it's just a, you know very few cards ever like bring me like oh my god i love it you know this is one that i like and you can see here he has a, a prosthetic leg and he it's so he's probably uh from the nine of wands now here in the king 
We have the Ace of Cups. I love the sloshing water, how it's animated here. How it looks like almost like an organic being coming out. Here we have the Two of Cups. So although it is uh, two men, or, or, you know, well, two male presenting people, I should say, uh, it, you do see the moon and the sun here as the two alchemical opposites coming into union here. So again, it's, it's the little lover's card, if you will. Here you have the Three of Cups, celebrations, good times. The, ro the, the three different colored ropes are intertwining here on the maypole, I believe. So celebrations, good times all around. Here we have the Four of Cups. Again, it's like not really paying attention. You're kind of like not, you're not there. You're, you're ignoring stuff or you're not noticing things that you need. So yeah, he does have an interesting take on the Three of Cups, I will say as well, uh, about like how you know, uh, the, the third squeaky wheel and how, and then how it plays out into the four of cups as well. It's it really, again, don't ignore the booklet. This is not a little white book with just sentences. No, no. He knows his shit. The five of cups right here. Yeah. With the morning. I, a part of me wishes that he colored it black because I do love that. Like, black look i think it would have looked cool like how the magician is like all in the solid black here i think that kind of would have looked cool maybe i don't know i don't know this my opinion. i would like to see an alternate version <laughs> with the black card here he talks about in the six of cups uh you know i believe this might be a representation of pavlov himself fyodor pavlov the artist the creator of the deck i think that's him it looks like him from what i've seen on instagram am i wrong <laughs> or am i wrong <laughs> or am I right? <laughs> Someone let me know. Uh, here we have the Seven of Cups. I like how he breaks down like his meanings for each of the little symbols in here. Um, it's like, you know, but for, for the general part, it's like the Seven of Cups is like, you know, illusion, distraction, too many choices. I'm not really sure which one to pick. I like to think of it as like the ending of, you know, the, the, the Holy Grail, you know, uh, of um, Indiana Jones. Uh, you know, I, I think that's, what is that? I can't remember what, or oh, Last Crusade, I think is what it's called. <laughs> or all those cups are there and they have to pick the right one. It's kind of like that. This is another one that he does a really good job. He talks about how we, even though we move away from things that we've worked on and worked so hard to accomplish or parts of our past, it's never really truly a clean blank slate. Uh, there's parts of what we've worked on or what we were doing that still linger with us and pop up in the future as we move on away from it. So it's not entirely leaving behind something that we worked so hard and so long for that we see in the traditional Eight of Cups and the Rider Waite Smith. This is more of like moving away and learning to process with things uh, that reoccur and remind us and trigger us of these past, you know, events uh, that we've seen. Uh, so, yeah. Also, the waterfalls, the water flowing there. That's very interesting there, that interplay right there. I just noticed how this looks, you know. Very interesting. Here we have the Nine of Cups. I like him. Hi, Daddy. Uh, you know, it, he talks about how, like, a feast, a bounty is wasted on just one, I think is what he said. I'm like, I love that. I love that. This is an invitation to invite other people with you. And he talks about here, the Ten of Cups, about family, all that good stuff. I love how it's uh, how it's giving me, uh, you know, Mexican uh, attire vibes. I love the aesthetic. I love it. Page of Cups here. The artist with her paintbrushes and her and her palette. It talks about how the fish is reminiscent of the golden fish, uh, granting wishes. Uh, here we have the Knight of Cups, how he's off of his horse, and he's a companion. His horse is his companion and his friend, and wait, and how the horse is waiting, has his hooves in the water, and is like in tune with the emotional aspects of it. Let me see if I can read it out for you. Let me read this out for you, because this is like really, this is good. This is good here. Like, this, this is a good example to see how you, what to expect from the guidebook. Okay, the Knight of Cups to me is the platonic ideal of the of a knight, not just a warrior and an and an adventurer, but a tender and sensitive protector. 
He is chivalrous in the historical meaning of the word, not just opening doors for miladies, but using his power and privilege to elevate the vulnerable. Usually all the knights in the minor arcana are painted atop their horses, but I wanted my knight of cups to stand beside his on equal footing as devoted companions rather than rider and steed. They are both drinking at the stream, the horse wading into it to lead its master into the flow of imagination and creativity that the water represents. The knight takes the it takes the time uh, in his journey to rest and appreciate the moment, to dream and to let his mind wander as he refreshes. He should no long he should not linger there too long and risk being caught up in his contemplation and distracted from his quest. The knight is still a card of action, but it is in his nature to dream and be guided by his creative vision. Hello. <laughs> oh my gosh, love that. The Queen of Cups. Pregnant, but full, but pregnant with potential and creativity and ideas. And, you know, I love that. And, and he talks about how she's supposed to be uh, a reflective of the star card with the with the lilies and the are those called like cattails. Yeah, you can kind of see how they're yeah, they're definitely reflective of each other. I love that. I love that. I think this, like I said, I have to look at the sun. Again, the wall there. I'm pretty sure he mentions that in other cards. Here you have the King of Cups, how he talks about how he is the uh, the opposite of the toxic masculinity. He's definitely there to break down that idea. He's definitely the compassionate father, the, the man that is, you know, well in tune with his emotions and isn't really insecure in them as well. I love it. And, and at first I was like, oh, King of Cups. He, he kind of wasn't that interesting to me at first. Like I kind of just... But after reading it, I was like, okay, I like him. I like him again. Because I love a good King of Cups. The King of Cups is always another card that I really like. So yeah, here's uh, the Ace of Swords. He's, he was talking about how the Ace of Swords was like the fastest suit that he completed. I think he said he completed it in a month, I believe. Uh, I, I love his take on the Two of Swords. How it's like, I love that. I love it. Again, it's like, it's, it's nothing... It's Rider Waite Smith, so if you know your Rider Waite Smith, you you can read this pretty comfortably. But it's and yet it it does like it it it, it puts in a nice breath of fresh air, you know. Um, and how he talks about the Three of Swords, very good. I think he should make a book on tarot. <laughs> I I would like to hear more of like what he what what his takes on tarot is. Um, so yeah. It's a shame that we never, that I don't have, uh, I don't know if my booklet is a misprint of, is a misprint, or if this is, uh, in all the books. So if you do have the Kickstarter, if you are getting your rewards, please confirm with me. Let me know. Am I, the, am I alone in this? <laughs> am I, the, is, is mine a misprint? I hope not. Uh, but if it is, collector's value. But I don't think I'll ever get rid of this. <laughs> You know, uh, here we have that because this is one I'm definitely going to be using. I love, I love the outfit. I love it. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. one thing I did, I didn't, I wasn't really too jazzed about was how bound up the Eight of Swords looks. She does look pretty much like, okay, yeah, she does have all these swords in front of her, but even her hands look tied, you know, well, kind of. Again, well, it, on on the front it does look she like she's pretty well tied up, whereas uh, the other eight of swords it's like there seems to be things in the way, but she can still utilize her her she can she still has some mobility, you know. Love the love the nine, the nightmares, but really it's like they they're scary and like you know when you have a bat flying around and near you and around you it kind of does like it, you kind of like freak out a bit, but. For the most part, they really aren't there to hurt you. They rarely ever, I don't think they ever do tangle themselves up in people's hair. Um, but really, they're just more looking for bugs to eat rather than to bite you. You know, it's kind of like that. Love this line of swords. The Ten of Swords, he does talk about that, like, you know, how dreary it is. But he did, like, want to, you know, uh, not weaken the Ten of Swords, but yeah, again, like, depict it as differently you know he isn't laying down pretty much dead he's he is he is definitely hurt um but you know it's it's he's he's about ready to stand up 
or he's probably being worn worn down he's like taking a knee and he's like probably gonna lay down right now well i don't know this is where you can you know this is where context comes in here we have the page of swords the you know uh the squire tending to the to the shield and the and the armor and the, and the weapons of the knight i guess you could say what is that what is that noise I don't know if you could hear that. <laughs> I think it's a car. Here we have the Knight of Swords. Talks about how it's a reference to Florence Welch's uh, picture, a picture that that she that she took, that she did, that she worked on. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> but she references that, and I'm like, oh, we stand because in this channel we stand Florence and the Machine. If you don't unsubscribe now, I don't need your energy on my channel. All right. <laughs> Queen of Swords right here. Love her face. I love how he depicts faces. They all look different, you know? Even though they look similar, it's like they're different people, you know? I love how he talks about, like, in the King of Swords, he kind of makes them youthful, but internally he has, like, a lot of experience and a lot of reason reasoning in his mind. He wanted to make sure to step away from the, uh, the, the pretentious uh, intellectual toxic masculine guy that like you know tries to swing his intellectual dick around you know and you have here uh, you know the worn down uh a throne a really old throne here that's worn down and cracking um he's very grounded with the sword being pointed down into the tip of the earth and a part of me is like this is a struggle with like the kings and the elemental associations to them where you know kings are usually shown as air and with the air of air, you kind of feel like, how can that be very grounded? But air of air is very much, uh, uh, you know, air is in its element, essentially. The, ele the mind is in its element and is very structured here and comfortable here. Uh, but of course, you kind of think of like air, air, too much air. It's too windy. It's too, you know, but with wind, that's energy. And that to me, energy is fire, whatever. Point is, though the structure and the groundedness does kind of make me want to make earth the element for uh so for for the kings but moving on <laughs> here we have the ace talks about how uh, uh talks about wheat and all that and how uh he uh, a friend of his pointed out that like wheat isn't really a good uh a good food source really and it really isn't like let's be real okay it's it's not not the healthiest but it has its cultural impacts and it has its 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 uses in terms of how civilization uh developed and worked through it and how it's you know implemented in bread so i do like that uh and he talks about how let me see let me check this again going back to the guidebook it's how giving bread is a form of like hospitality uh, in uh, you hold on I don't want to I don't want to mess this up because it is very specific here we go let me read it from here let me let me just read from the book again because might as well you know from what he wrote you know I he can explain it better than I can <laughs> uh, the card of abundance the harvest home enrichment new opportunity physical manifestation of security and comfort that comes with success in the sphere of labor these are the potentials contained within the Ace of Coins. It is up to us to work hard towards our goals, to stay the course, to reach out and grab the rewards. So instead of one hand holding out the coin, as in, tra as in traditional and most representation, as is traditional in most representations of the cards, uh, the coin in my Ace is fully cradled with two arms to encourage the Quarant in their pursuit of the Ace's bounty. A celiac friend of mine joked that she didn't ha like the choice of wheat as a decorative element in the illustration, and I and I hear her and I hear her point. Wheat is no friend at all, but historically, its cultural significance and symbolisms are impossible to ignore or deny, especially in the Western world. In Russia, where I come from, bread was uh, was and is life, a staple of our diet and a touchstone around which community revolved. It is tradition to greet newcomers with a fresh loaf as a gesture of hospitality and to break bread with them in goodwill. So sheaves of wheat decorate the coins in my suit, and stalks of it appear in the card throughout the suit to symbolize all the coins stand for. All that the coins stand for, wealth, abundance, and harvest, fulfillment, satiation, or the need or for or absence of those things. And we're going to see that concept of like giving the bread uh, in the Queen of Pentacles. So here I have the Two of Coins. 
balancing things out working things out very interesting how the cloth i just noticed like it's not the sun it's a cloth it's you know <laughs> i'm impressed you have the three of coins i i i'm not a big fan of the master apprentice take on the three of coins i do prefer the uh you know the the more the bigger like you know three well-rounded people that are you know they're not apprentices they're all experts working together to work on the bigger on the on this massive project here uh, but he does point that out that it is for more bigger projects you have the four of coins talking about withholding resources and knowing when to properly withhold resources here we have the five of coins how he changed it from the traditional like people outside of the church but here like the doors you know they're much more there's much more accessibility here there's the coin and the child representing hope um you know away from like the four of coins blocking blocking out you know the two people that are in need of help uh, and here it, there's that hope that uh, you can uh, get in you you there is access you know you just the doors will open you know there is that hope it's a little more hopeful take of the fives here we have the six of coins, and he really does take, uh, he does change this as more of showing a Jewish rabbi uh, to show the uh, someone of a spiritual hierarchy, uh, you know, giving to those uh, to those in need rather than someone in a economic hierarchy, if that makes sense. The seven of coins here. I I I. I would have preferred a more stationary person because the seven of coins to me, there is that because I, I always when I uh, when I do yard work in the backyard, there's always that moment where you're halfway through or you're like more than halfway around there where you have to stop what you're doing and stop and take a breather, wipe the sweat off your brow and look at how much you've done already. You know, it would have you know, it's that's usually what I see with the seven of coins. It's like the person pausing, taking a short break to examine what he's done so far and what he has left to do. Sometimes that's not really helpful because then you just waste time looking at like, oh my God, I have so much work, more work to do. Complaining isn't going to get the work done. But whatever, you know, it's, yeah, you know, he's getting the work done. He's plowing the field, you know, getting it ready for, for the coins to grow. Here we have the eight of coins, craftsmanship, practicing, making it and talking about like how repetitiveness could also lead to stagnation to be aware of that, all that stuff. I have the nine comfort and luxury and and you know being wealthily comfortable you can see the brick wall back here as well i noticed that he doesn't talk about it i'm like i noticed it i noticed it i think there was another card i think i missed it uh, where there's a brick wall yeah right here the six of cups i forgot to point out is also like a reference to uh, it's like essentially it's the scenery of the sun card uh but instead at night you know uh here we have the ten of coins love it it's you know uh it's uh talks about how this is nope i don't want to say the tribe name because i'm probably going to butcher the name but i'll just show the word <laughs> uh the but he taught there's so much intentional symbolism here uh shoshon shoshone shoshone if that if that's you know i don't know someone please someone please Tell me how, or I'll look it up on Google. I should have looked it up on Google, but what I do like is that you have, uh, you know, the three traditional uh, 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 harvest fruits, the three sisters, as they call it, beans, squash, and corn, and then you have uh, the imported grain of wheat here, you know, and then you have the three generations here. You know, you have the grandmother, uh, the daughter, and her husband as the second generation, and then the third generation as the child here. Love that. Love that. And then the dog of loyalty right there. Uh, we have the page of coins here. She's she's sowing her seeds. She's planting her seeds, you know, for the for the village in the background. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here we have the knight of coins again. He, he does talk about uh, how uh, he is, you know, able to take his time and process things differently. It's definitely a much more clever take on putting uh, someone in a wheelchair in the tarot cards because, yeah, and some, and so, yeah, I definitely recommend the guidebook because it's, he explains it perfectly, but I don't want to read too much from it. I want you guys to read it yourselves, okay? So here we have the queen of coins, 
giving us that bread. Uh, she's very hospitable. She's very much that. She's a she's a very good uh, host, hostess. Here you have the king of coins talking about how he is a king of the people, how he is a part of the society just as we are, uh, so on and so forth. He's very social. He's very like in 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 with a lot with with uh, with the many different types of people uh, in his in in all forms of his kingdom, if you will. So yeah, uh, so there you go. Uh, it this is definitely a deck that I have just i i've fallen in love with it i love it i love it i love it i think this is like wow this should have come out sooner <laughs> uh it's definitely like uh, he took his time with this with this deck i will say and it it shows it shows that he, he it, it i'm gonna give it a nine out of ten let me just say that cardstock is great uh, I will say though, um, mine is like getting, this is after, you know, a few days of working with it and shuffling it, uh, and she's already a little bit worn out and a little, I'm a little disappointed in that. Um, and let's, let me check my, cause let me, let me look at my Materia Prima, uh, to show. I'm pretty sure Materia Prima is just as bad. Mm, not really. I can't really tell though, but it really isn't that. I know I really can't tell, and I've shuffled this quite a bit already. You know, I've I've just you know, from holding it and handling it uh, compared to this. Maybe this is more noticeable. I don't know. I don't know. But either way, great card stock. It's I I I, I love it. It's it's it, it, this is one that I want to work with. This is one I want to shuffle. This is one I want to grab, and I want to read with. When I got it. This is right when around the time where I was like, okay, I'm over doing free live readings. I don't want to do anymore. I need to take a break. I need to start moving away from them and pulling back from doing them. And then this came in and I'm like, I need to do readings with them. And I'm like, I have no other way to get to do readings other than through going live and saying, you know, I want to do some free live readings. And I wanted to work with it. And let me tell you, almost all the readings I did with, uh, I did, I used with this deck because uh, it's, and it reads so well, it's just, I, he hit it out of the park. Let me just say that. <laughs> he, he did what? That. That is what he did. Uh, so yeah. Great job, uh, Fyodor uh, Pavlov. Congrats on the completion of this Kickstarter. To anyone that's waiting for your copy, uh, you know, hopefully you get it soon. Uh, hopefully, uh, and like I said, May, he'll have his website up and ready to, you know, and you can order it there. Uh, we're going to call it a day there, I think, on this, on this, on this walkthrough. <laughs> uh, I hope you all enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, let's see what else. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what else to say. <laughs> I guess I'll see you all later. Uh, links will be to, will be for more information on this, for his Instagram, all that in the description down below, uh, and I'll see you all later. Bye, everyone.